This is a Canon 800D DSLR, which is a really rather decent entry-level video camera. Uh, so, when I got this, I also decided to get one of the video camera fundamentals when you're dealing with DSLRs, which is a battery grip. Because when you've only got the integrated DSLR battery, it's this size battery and you cannot fit anything bigger inside. So this is the Mikey battery grip for the Canon EOS series. So let's get this battery door off and... Uh, hmm... Well, that's not gonna work now, is it? Ah, yes indeed. Canon seems to have a bit of a trick up its sleeve when it comes to this rather low-end camera, and that is that they haven't released any suitable battery grip for it, and nor do they really have to seem to be, have implemented any of the battery grippy stuff, since you can see these have this row of extra connectors which go to all the buttons and stuff which enables you to use this as a very comfortable vertical shooting accessory as well as an extended battery. So I'm not looking too hopeful for actually having an official Canon grip for this thing available, well, ever. So I figured we'd take the matter into our own hands. So that's why I got this battery grip, which is for the 760D, which is pretty much a predecessor to this camera, uh, which uses the same LPE17 battery, which is the one which has these recessed connectors, uh, and uh, is pretty similar a camera, same for a porous spec, and of course the battery is mounted 90 degrees wrong, and this geometry is a bit different. So this particular battery grip uh, has a sliding caddy where you can fit uh, two of the original LPE17 batteries which would provide you with well double battery life compared to the original integrated battery but uh, I think this is a very poor use of space because we have this caddy which is really a lot of dead weight, it's just so much plastic. And if we compare the size of two of these batteries to the whole battery grip, well, you can just throw them in there ever which way, and there's so much wasted space in there, it's just insane. So I think we can make this a lot better than two Canon batteries. So let's get this thing apart and see how it looks like inside. Well, I've already cheated and had it apart, apart just a bit to have a quick peek. Uh, and we'll see if we can perhaps make this something a bit better. And there we have her apart and holy hell is this thing elaborate for being a cheap Chinese clone. I mean, just look at all these parts and there has to be at least 20 to 30 screws holding everything together and different dimensions to boot. This is absolutely insane. <laughs> I'm positively stunned. We even have some rather elaborate pieces like this piece of a uh, custom flat flex. I, they probably just cloned the original Canon parts but well, that is very, very elaborate. And just have a look at this uh, shutter and uh, combo wheel device. You do not see this in cheap Chinese things, usually. This thing, I I can't believe they're making a profit for it selling this for like $40. This is insane. So much custom stuff and just Look at this uh, rubber coating, it's not over molded, but rather this is a complex uh, part which they've just glued on with uh, double sided tape. But just look at the detail in that. That's just ridiculous. Absolutely insane, absolutely insane. And we haven't even taken this apart yet. Uh, so. 
a quick couple of comments on this thing before we get to actually uh, modifying it. The mechanical quality in general seems to be very good on this thing. Again, this is a Mike Make brand. And the electronics seem to be of uh, very high quality. This is a uh, not a bad looking PCB at all. There's quite a bit of stuff going on there. This gear assembly, as you can see, the tripod mount isn't just moving uh, with a, a screw in the center. It's actually got metal gears in there turning that shaft. That has pretty decent feel to it. There's a gear ratio, it's the, uh, the perhaps uh, two to one or so. So you turn this a lot and this turns a little, which enables you to torque your camera down quite considerably. Uh, even w w with just this little round wheel thingy. This is, again, a beautiful piece of engineering. I can't believe they get it d this good in this cheaper device and a proper big chunk of metal there. And there's no lack of metal in this thing. Uh, this uh, plate actually goes on top of that. So you have, that has to be almost two millimeters of metal there between the base and your camera. And the same with the bottom. This is the bottom plate, which has the tripod screw. Relatively thick part. I'm not sure how well this is actually going to mount the tripod screw, but it is mounted with uh, four screws there as well. And uh, on the underside of that, we have an extra uh, plastic cover clamping it onto the actual clamshell. So you have a big plate on the inside and the little plate on the outside, which is going to make this made very thoroughly. So I am positively surprised by the build quality of this thing. I did not expect something this good from out of something this cheap. Uh, but uh, what we're really interested in now is uh, uh, these two parts. Oh, I forgot to tear this thing apart, damn it. Uh, so, in order to make this fit the 800D, uh, we need to uh, flip the battery so uh, it mounts kind of like that. There's a bit of an angle to the camera, so it's going to be a bit finicky. I think I might just uh, kind of mount this loosely so that it has some flex when you shove it in. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, we want to see how big a battery we can fit inside this. So when I, since I've stripped out all the electrics and electronics, we actually do have a rather large empty chamber here where we can actually fit a pretty decent sized battery. Uh, it should be noted that uh, from the factory it comes with this little guide which means there in order to prevent, uh, allow the uh, battery cartridge to slide properly. Removing this makes everything just a tad bigger at the expense of probably some mechanical rigidity, but uh, we don't really care about that. I think this, this actually has a decent feel to it. This is rather good plastic. I mean, I can flex it if I use some force, but uh, really this feels good. I would not be surprised if this is even glass fiber reinforced. Let's uh, do an A test. Scratch it somewhere. Oh, yeah. That definitely has glass fiber in it. I can feel my knife going dull as shit from just looking at it. So this is actually a glass fiber reinforced. Something or the other. I'm, I cannot do the magic. You tell me what it is. Probably some kind of ABS since it's Chinese, I don't, I don't know. It feels too good to be ABS, really. No marks on it of any kind, hmm. But yeah, I'm going to reassemble this as little as I possibly can in order to uh, have it kind of cosmetically complete and uh, see how big a battery I can fit in there. Since we don't have the extra connectors, I'm going to, I have no use for any of these beautiful little buttony things. Like the, there's no way for this to communicate with a camera, nor do I need the PCB or any of that stuff. So I'll have to measure this up 
and see what kind of battery we can fit inside. Oh, this thing just never ceases to amaze. Just look at how well the uh, scroll wheel thing and the uh, shutter button plastic thing fit together. It's just amazing for the price you pay. And just this plastic thing on its own, look how they've actually taken the effort to put that little locking washer on the shutter button and have it actually bottom eight so that this can stay mounted to a plastic without anything behind it. You know, normally you just have a button which is slightly larger on the inside, so it wouldn't pop out, it would rather pop into the device when you take it apart. But in this case, it just stays there and it's internally spring loaded. So you get a pretty decent feel out of this when you actually have it pushing the little two stage tactile button in the mechanism. Which, of course, which sits on its own custom flat flex. I mean, just how is this a $40 device? How, ca how is this a $40 device? It's just. It's the mind boggles, as some other popular YouTubers would say. All right, I've now ground out as much plastic as I can out of these uh, case halves uh, in order to accommodate as large uh, a volume inside there for battery. So I chose not to grind away these things uh, since it's kind of rounded anyway and these do a lot for mechanical stability if you want to grab it like that but, but it just doesn't just croak and go <coughs> so uh, the measurements I've arrived at and sadly this thing puts a bit of a stake in our wheels is uh, about 113 millimeters by 47 by 21 uh, length by width by height and it would be 26 millimeters tall if uh, not for the fact that this just has a giant bulge there for the tripod thread which we're not going to be able to get rid of because I obviously like being able to mount my camera on a tripod but uh, either way uh, the tactic I'm probably going to go for is uh, trying to find uh, an RC uh, lipo pack which kind of fits these dimensions uh, because uh, you could actually, in theory, work with uh, like uh, some kind of standard round lithium cells. Indeed, you can very well fit a few 18650s in there, but uh, you cannot get very good volumetric efficiency out of those. As you can see there, you get, can get kind of free wedged in there, but there's no room for more lengthwise and yeah, I'd have to make all my own protection circuits and what have you. Another potential way to do it would be to get like uh, some smaller 18650, rather 18 diameter cells and just uh, shove them in this way. Uh, like a laptop pack, that way you could actually get pretty decent uh, efficiency in there. You could get like one, two, three, four, five, perhaps even six cells in there. And uh, the smaller ones are like uh, 1.8 amp hours, so you'd get uh, mm -hmm. 2 amp hours, 4 amp hours, almost, almost 6 amp hours, 5 point something at 7.4 volts, which would be rather respectable. Uh, but I'd have to change down quality cells, which is going to be a pain unless I can like find 18500s in a tool battery or something and. Yeah, if you if you if you know about a tool battery which has like eighteen five hundred cells in it, uh, that could actually be an option. Just rip one of those apart. Uh, tool tool cells tend to be of very high quality, so they live a very easy life in this application. Just getting very slowly drained. But yeah, for the time being, I think I'm going to start chasing around some lipo cells, uh, two series. Uh, for, uh, hopefully I can get like 5 amp in there. 
I guess for Chinese standard sizes, we'll have to determine that. So yeah, since we're going to be waiting, I'm just going to go ahead and publish this video right now. And hopefully we'll have a better battery in not a lot of time. <laughs> Wait, you can just fit so many of the Canon original batteries in there. I still have room to spare. I mean, let's just shove in. Oh, that's a cell phone battery. And I can almost fit a fourth Canon original battery in there. I can't believe they're just going for two batteries in the original or implementation of this. I mean, you could easily build one of these, which takes like four, if you just give the proper mechanical dimensions for it. Easily, I just look at that. Free in, no worries at all. Imagine if this was a bit taller, you could just stack the batteries vertically. You could get like seven Canon original batteries, a seven amp hour battery for your camera. Uh, but we can but dream. This is what we've got to work for. So, uh, thank you for watching. Cherry, I hope you found it a bit interesting to see one of these Mikey battery groups taking apart. I must say this, I'm not sure if the other Chinese ones are good, but this Mikey one, proper quality, very good quality for, for the money you pay. I am utterly amazed that uh, they're this good quality. Utterly amazed. Yeah, bye. Ah, I just had the top of a battery uh, insert apart and I can just look at the quality of a plastic molding. All these little holes, everything in one single piece. I mean, this, this is just silly for something coming out of China this cheap. Absolutely ridiculous.